This video is sponsored by Code118, a wallet I love and is perfectly designed for carrying cards, but more on them later. Today we're looking at the best checking accounts and cashback debit cards this year. Since the last time I made a video like this, a lot of things have changed. The way this is gonna work is I've got 16 debit cards and accounts that I've reviewed and wanna compare in this video. With each one, I'm gonna give some pros and cons, then talk about my favorites at the end. I can't give you a ton of detail in this format, but I can give you a good overview. And if you're interested, you can check out each individual review in the description down below, along with sign up affiliate links if you want to try out any of them yourself. And many of them have sign up bonuses. All right, here's the list of the dev cards that we're going to look at. Juno, Venmo, Cash App, Yada, Current, Aspiration, Revolut, Robinhood, TreeCard, Quantic, Discover, Fidelity Bloom, Oxygen, One, Future, and SoFi. I'll have timestamps in the description down below in case you want to skip around because there is a of information in this video. Quick disclaimer, these are the details of these cards at the time of filming. There's a good chance that as time progresses, they may change cashback percentages, interest rates, whatever. Just know that if you want to sign up for one, you should look at the details and just see if anything has been updated. Let's jump right in. The first debit card is Juno. Here are some of the pros. Juno is a banking platform that provides a ton of benefits. First of all, right now, it provides a 5% deposit bonus on your balance, up to $50,000 right now. So for every $1,000 that you have in your account, you'll earn about $50 per year. Helps with inflation right now, for sure. Juno also provides 5% cash back on up to 10 different companies that you can change in your account from month to month. Some of my favorites are Amazon, Kroger, Netflix, Chevron, Shell, American Airlines, Home Depot, Starbucks, Airbnb, and a bunch of others. Now, cashback is limited to $25 on the basic account and $300 on the metal account. Juno provides its own JCoin crypto for every purchase that you make, which can actually be turned into gift cards. And Juno doesn't have any monthly fees. Here's some cons. So the basic plan is pretty basic. It still gets the 5% deposit bonus, but only $25 in cashback, which is pretty low. In order to get the metal, account you have to sign up for direct deposit. It's called the metal account because this thing's steal. Also the 5% deposit bonus is on the checking account. I'd really like to have a savings account in addition to the checking account, but it's ultimately not that big of a deal. Next is Venmo. Venmo is a great platform for sharing expenses with others. It really is. No monthly fees. Their cashback is pretty limited though. When you tap on the debit card within the app, it'll build a custom experience for you where it'll show you local restaurants that provide cashback. Honestly, most of them aren't places that I would choose to go eat, but there are some other companies that provide cashback that may come in handy, like 5% at Ticketmaster to offset all those Ticketmaster fees, or 8% at Minus, or 5% at Jersey Mike's. But that's pretty much it when it comes to Venmo cashback. Otherwise, Venmo is great for sharing expenses, whether it's rent or dinner or chocolate milk or ride sharing fuel. But here are some cons. The biggest thing is insurance, because recently the Federal Consumer Protection Bureau came out and warned that some services like Venmo and Cash App may not actually have your money protected with FDIC insurance against the collapse of their business, which is a bigger deal than ever with three of the largest American banks kicking the bucket this year. Ultimately, this doesn't bother me that much. I just ensure I don't have that much money in those accounts, just in case something happens. I have like $170 in my Venmo, so I'm not that worried about it. I certainly don't have direct deposit set up or even use Venmo like it's a bank account. The next account is Cash App. Here are some pros. Cash App is really very similar to Venmo. You can split dinner with friends by sending them money immediately. Almost identical in terms of service, but I think it does have slightly better cashback. Less local and niche cashback as far as I can tell. 2% at Walmart, 10% at Shake Shack, 6% at Advance Auto, 5% at Kohl's. And you can also design your own card with a message that really hits home for you. You can literally file your taxes for free through the Cash App, provided you have a simple return. That's awesome. Also no monthly fees, so that's also awesome. And really the biggest con is exactly what I already said about Venmo, and that is that it's not necessarily that your balance is insured by the FDIC. We'll come back to that more later. Just be careful about how much you have in your account. Next is Yada. Here are some pros. Yada is easily the most unique in terms of its cashback. So Yada is a bank that actually runs a lottery of sorts based on savings. So for example, for every $25 that you save with Yada, you get one ticket for weekly lottery drawings. And depending on how many numbers you match, you'll earn winnings up to $1 million. And to make things even better, the average account with Yada actually averages out at about 2.7% savings reward. Basically, like 
like interest, but it's not guaranteed. The cashback comes in the form of tickets, believe it or not. So for every purchase you make, you'll get 50% back in tickets. So you'll get one ticket for every $50 that you spend, which slightly increases your chances at winning in a drawing. You'll also get a chance at lucky swipes, which is where your swipe is free. So for example, on their website, Yada says in the last 30 days, 0.66% of debit card purchases were won for free and 34% of purchases won cash. Yada's definitely got a unique service with no monthly fees and it's FDIC insured. Okay, here's some cons. I like the creativity behind Yada, but honestly, the biggest con in my opinion is that nothing is guaranteed. You can tell I don't play the lottery. The 2.7% reward on your savings is statistically based on your ticket's likelihood of matching numbers. Whereas right now you can get four to 5% interest on high yield savings accounts guaranteed. So it's up to you if you're willing to use Yada to potentially win bigger winnings or a lucky swipe. Next up, current, which ironically, I don't think this is the current debit card design. I think they updated the design. Here's some pros. Current does have cash back, but it's nothing crazy. In fact, it's very similar to that of Venmo in that it's pretty much only local restaurants. Most of them are 5% back though, like hot chicken takeover, chicken salad chick. You can earn points and then turn them in for straight up cash within the account. And right now, if you have direct deposit with them of over $200 per month, you'll earn 4% interest on up to $6,000 of savings. A notable feature is when you use the debit card at a gas station. They won't actually put a large hold on your balance, which is very nice because I've had some gas stations put a $125 hold on my account until I finish fueling. Here's some cons. Really honestly, nothing major. Just that the concrete cash benefits of this account, like the 4% interest, are directly related to having direct deposits set up, or that the cashback is very limited to specific offers. But otherwise, Current is a nice account. Next, we've got Aspiration. Here are some pros. Aspiration is the first green bank that I reviewed on this channel. Their goal is to bank banking zero carbon by buying offsets to neutralize impact and by planting trees with each roundup, which is nice, but how does it hold up to other accounts? Aspiration offers cash back on very niche purchases from their conscience coalition of companies that are especially environmentally friendly, like Blue Apron, Tom's, Warby Parker, and others. Otherwise, you're not really going to earn that much cash back outside of these purchases. You can get three to 10 percent back depending on the membership that you have which brings me to the cons because aspiration is the first one on here that has any monthly fees there's a tier called pay what is fair even if it's zero and then there's aspiration plus which will cost you eight dollars per month but it will come with some extra environmental benefits as well as up to three percent apy on your savings as long as you hit a minimum debit card spend i mean i get why they have a fee but fees regardless of justification are always going to make it into my cons list next is Revolut. Let's get into some pros. Revolut probably has the most flexibility of any of these cards because it's actually available for sign up among many international users. You don't need a social security number to sign up like most of these accounts because the majority of them are American banks. Revolut has a ton of services as a part of their account and you'll get a much better feel for it by watching my full review after this video. But the moral of the story is it's fantastic for most things internationally. Great for travel, international purchases, as well as transferring currencies at relatively low transfer rates. Revolut also has some cash back, which is fine. They have some offers for some larger companies that may be good for you. The Exporting Goods, eBay, Hertz Car Rental, and here's some cons. Revolut does have a free version, which is pretty limited in terms of its benefits, but they also have four other tiers that cost the monthly fee, all the way up to 45 pounds per month. Psh, that's like a lot of dollars per month. But in its defense, a lot of the monthly fees come with great benefits, like premium travel benefits and higher interest rates on savings. Next is Robinhood. Robinhood has a debit card attached to their cash account, and it's a bit more unique in terms of its cash back. For one, they offer cash back at specific stores using the card. Like right now, I'm seeing 2% back at Auntie Anne's, Jamba Juice, and some others. But the more unique cash back happens when you round up. So if you set up roundups along with a fund where you want those roundups to be deposited, Robinhood will use your balance to round up every purchase to the nearest dollar and invest that rounded up amount into the fund that you chose. Now at the end of the week, Robinhood will take your total weekly rounded up amount and match it at 10% to 100% of the roundups. So for example, I made a purchase of coffee for $4.29. So Robinhood rounded that up to $5 and took the other 71 cents from my balance and invested it in the fund that I chose. Then at the end of the week, it matched 10% of my roundup by investing that seven cents into the same investment and the cons. Here's the thing though, if you do the math, it's honestly not that great in terms of cashback. 
It's all dependent on the price of the purchase and the amount of your roundup. In this case, that seven cents was essentially 1.6% cash back on that purchase. So the larger the purchase, the lower the effect of cash back. I like the Robinhood cash card service, but just keep that in mind. Now I know what you're thinking. We're like halfway through this. How the heck does Caleb carry around all these cards to test them? It's 16 cards. What are we talking here, a grocery bag? The answer is simple, I don't. But what cards I do hold, I carry around in my Code 118 wallet because it's literally made for cards and lots of them. Anyways, it's got seven card slots in it. It pops out with the slide of this button, making it really easy to just pull out whatever you wanna pay with. It's made out of aerospace grade aluminum. I've been using this since September and it's held up very well. But if for any reason it doesn't hold up, it's got a lifetime warranty. The one that I've been using is kind of like an army green, but they also have silver, blue, and black. If you have more than seven cards, you can use a back plate like this where you just put it under the strap and then you can put cards between the wallet and that back plate. I've been using that for a while and it's pretty nice because I don't worry about cards falling out. So your wallet's valuable. You can get this strap, which is actually for an AirTag. That way, if you lose your wallet, then you can still track it down with the AirTag. You can get a carbon fiber multi-tool, which can just fit on the back side of that back plate. It's got like wrenches in there. It's got a measuring tape on the side. So if you're going fishing, you can, you know, measure your fish that you catch. They have another multi-tool for your keys which I'm putting on my keys right now. If you're interested in more of a classy look, you can get one of these leather outsides and just put your wallet in there. Got a couple small pockets on there, one on both sides. And my all-time favorite accessory for this wallet that I actually carry on my wallet all the time. You can see it right here, it's a tiny pen. I've used this thing a lot because there are so many times that I don't have a pen when I need one to write a check or sign something or whatever. It flows super nicely. You can write anything with it. Easily my favorite accessory for the Code 118 wallet. If you're interested, check out my affiliate link in the description down below. Right now they've got a sale of up to 40% off. Thank you Code 118 for sponsoring this and let's see if we can get 16 cards in here. Psh, I didn't give them enough credit. Look at that, 16 right there. Now the ones under the back plate aren't very easy to get to, but you can do it. Next up is the tree card. The tree card used to be one of my favorites to be completely honest. I mean, for one, it literally has a wooden debit card. Most unique debit card out there. Eh, I better hold out on crowning most unique just yet. You'll see what I mean in a moment. The tree card started out great in terms of its benefits. It essentially provided 1% cash back on all purchases and you could turn in points for a cash balance or get a deal on products and experiences while planting trees with every $50 that you spend. Well, they just recently changed most of that. Cashback is effectively closer to 0.5% now, and you can no longer turn in points for statement credit. But if you're more interested in the sustainable banking aspect, you do still plant one tree for every $50 that you spend. But personally, I would say don't get this card for the rewards. I should note some people have commented on my channel recently asking about how you actually order a card because they've had issues with it through the app. I looked at their website and it still shows that spending with the card is available and I'm still able to use mine, so I don't know. Next is Quantic, and this really does take the crown for most unique debit card. Well, not this one specifically, because it still has the activation sticker on it because I haven't used it. I'm talking about this. It's a debit card ring, which I actually wear as my wedding band. Anywhere that takes contactless payments will take this ring. All you have to do is hold it up close to the reader. And let me tell you, it's pretty entertaining to see the cashier's reaction. It's pretty freaking sweet, and it looks really nice. Quantic is a very, very simple account overall, but they do offer three different checking accounts that you can choose from. One is a Bitcoin cashback account where you get 1.5% back in Bitcoin for every debit purchase. Two is a high yield checking account where you get 1.1% APY on your checking balance. And the third is the 1% cashback checking account where you'll get 1% back on all your debit purchases. Lots of options to choose from, but the coolest part of Quantic is the ring. Next, we've got the Discover cashback debit card. Discover is one of my favorites. It's one of the more versatile accounts. Since it's a large bank, they offer a ton of services, ATMs, etc. The checking account actually comes with checks, which doesn't happen on most of these accounts. And they offer 1% cash back on all purchases, up to $30 back per month and no monthly fees at all. Honestly, there aren't that many cons that come with the Discover checking account. Other than that, it doesn't come with interest on the account, but that's generally a savings account thing anyways. And you can easily sign up for a Discover savings account to use in conjunction with your Discover cashback checking account, all while you earn the current 4.15% APY on your savings. Next, we have Fidelity Bloom. 
Fidelity has obviously been around for a long time handling investments, 401ks, IRAs, while their Bloom account jumps over from investing to spending and saving. It comes with a debit card, which does provide some cash back, both in offers created for specific companies like Disney Plus and Verizon, and also 10 cents back per transaction that you make. I mean, if you're really serious about maximizing rewards, you could use this for only purchases where it's like $10 or less. Then you're getting a minimum of at least 1% cash back. Bloom also offers the ability to to pseudo invest with your savings. On their website, they say that any money that you don't have invested will be held in a money market mutual fund, showing a 4.74% return using recent data. So while it's not a guaranteed interest like a lot of other accounts, it does have the potential to earn something. And in my experience, did remarkably well with the balance that I had. Another thing that I like about Bloom is that given it's operated by Fidelity, they really encourage savings. So they have these challenges to actually help you with building your savings and building positive financial habits. There's nothing really that stuck out drastically to me about Fidelity Bloom in terms of cons. The cashback may be a little wanting. It'd be nice to have a guaranteed interest rate on your balance like a lot of other accounts do, but Bloom is a great account, especially if you already have a Fidelity account. And there aren't any monthly fees, so that's muy bueno. Next we have Oxygen. Here are some pros. Oxygen is a newer account with four tiers of service, earth, water, air, and fire. Each one has increasing minimum qualifications as well as annual fees and benefits. So for example, earth is the lowest tier. Yeah, that's the one that I have. It has no annual fee and no minimums. It gets 2% cash back on select types of purchases, like anything from Walmart, different shipping services, gas, gaming, meal delivery, and several other categories, including $1 cash back on a fast food or coffee purchase every day. That's actually pretty good. You'll get 0.5% percent APY on your savings and it comes with a number of retail and travel benefits like cell phone protection and lost luggage protection among others then on the opposite end of the spectrum we've got fire which has a minimum monthly direct deposit qualification of six grand a minimum debit card spend of two grand and an annual fee of two hundred dollars but it also comes with a steel debit card six percent cash back on the categories that I mentioned three percent APY on your savings the retail and travel benefits that I mentioned plus global entry reimbursement and a 10 visit priority pass annual membership. Also, I love that with Oxygen, you can open a cashback business account and you can manage your business and personal finances from the same app. But here are some cons. Obviously, there are some annual fees, but they still give you a free version to use. But one of my biggest complaints is actually with the cashback because you have to activate every offer that you're going to use and you can only use one at a time. So you really have to be thinking before you purchase if there's any cashback that you want to earn. Next is One Finance. One Finance has a cashback checking account that was fine, but recently got way better. No monthly fees. And if you have a monthly direct deposit of $500 or more, then you'll get some extra bonuses. For one, you'll get 3% back at Walmart up to $50 per year, as well as some cashback offers within the app from companies like Outback Steakhouse and Auntie Anne's. You'll get up to $200 of overdraft protection. And my personal favorite, you'll get 5% APY on your savings on up to a $100,000 balance. That is fantastic interest. Also, for whatever it's worth, one really is one of the simplest and straightforward apps and accounts that that I've reviewed, truly making it easy for account holders to navigate. Here are the cons. The two biggest cons in my opinion are one, cashback is very limited, almost entirely to Walmart, and most of the big benefits are directly dependent on you having direct deposit set up with One Finance. But it's definitely worth a look if you're interested in a new account. Next is the future card. And I don't actually have that card because they started out with only a virtual card. Apparently I never ordered a physical one. Future is the third of the environmentally friendly accounts, or at least the ones that market themselves that way. This is actually a fantastic card when it comes to rewards because it gives you 1% cash back on everything. No limits either, which is awesome. Future also provides high cash back for high impact items and companies all the way up to 6%. So right now there's like a bunch of thrift stores like Goodwill and secondhand sellers where you'll actually get 5% back on those purchases because they're trying to encourage recycling clothing. EV charging, e-bike renting, e-scooter renting, they're all 5% back. Public transit is 5% back. Points can be traded in for a cash balance or other new and used products and electronics. And Future, of course, has no monthly fees. Here's the cons. 
future is very limited in terms of its tools for money in and money out. You can do a direct money transfer by connecting a bank account within the app, but you can only link one bank account. You can't wire, send a check, do a mobile check deposit, add funds via a debit card or anything like that. So in terms of free options, you're at the mercy of a, the transfer rate from another bank account. Or you can do it instantly via Venmo, Cash App, or Apple Cash for a fee. Not the best options, but not a reason in my opinion to not consider future given its other benefits. And our last debit card, SoFi. Pros, SoFi has a checking account with a cashback debit card. Cashback is pretty much limited to only local restaurants though, so about 4% from the ones that I'm seeing around us. SoFi has great interest on their accounts, 4.3% APY at the moment on their savings account, which by the way, it comes with a checking account when you sign up, and it has up to $50 of overdraft protection and no monthly fees. One of my biggest complaints about SoFi's account is that basically all of the great features, like the high interest and the overdraft protection, requires that you sign up for direct deposit. So unfortunately, this isn't just gonna be a high yield savings account that you open up without having to move over your paycheck as well. The other thing is SoFi does a stupid amount of debt marketing. I'm always getting emails or notifications or whatever encouraging me to sign up for their credit card or a personal loan or whatever. So that's something to be very careful of. Now there are four features of these accounts that I felt would be easier to cover if I just put them together. And that is insurance, ATMs, bill pay, and crypto. FDIC insurance. We all know it's important now. It's been increasingly more obvious how important it really is. Good news is all of these accounts have FDIC insurance with a couple exceptions, Cash App and Venmo. Like I mentioned before, these don't necessarily have FDIC insurance on those balances. Basically, you have to fulfill certain qualifications to get insurance on your balance. So make sure you look into that before you choose to hold large balances within these accounts. The other two that are particularly notable are Aspiration and SoFi. Where most bank accounts are FDIC insured up to $250,000, both of these offer FDIC insurance up to $2 million by partnering with other banks. So yeah, for all you people watching this video, video who happened to be holding more than $250,000 in a bank account, now you know. Almost all of these accounts have access to tens of thousands of ATMs for free. Most of them have 55,000 or more ATMs available, either through MoneyPass or through AllPoint. Unfortunately, not all do. TreeCard doesn't appear to have an agreement with any nationwide ATM operator. So that would likely have a fee associated with it. Same with Fidelity Bloom and the Future Card. Cash App offers free in-network ATM usage, but only if you have $300 or more in direct deposits every month. Current and Oxygen are a little lower at 40,000 free ATMs. Revolut depends on the tier that you have and how large of an ATM withdrawal limit you want before getting hit with a fee. Juno is the best in my opinion. They actually have both MoneyPass and AllPoint ATMs available for free. Plus up to one to three free ATMs transactions at out-of-network ATMs. Bill pay. I love an account that provides checks. However, only two provide actual paper checks as a part of their service. Discover and SoFi. You can order checks directly from them for free. Some other accounts will actually allow you to send a check from the app for free, which makes it a lot easier to pay people and handle bills. Robinhood, SoFi, Aspiration, Revolut, Yada, and Oxygen. They all have great options to send a check through the app, saving you time and a stamp and crypto. Some of these accounts actually let you purchase crypto through the app, which is cool, but it comes with a disclaimer. Crypto is not insured through these accounts, and that's even more important to consider than ever. After FTX and other companies just went bankrupt last year, and many people, including myself, lost money because of it. Having said that, purchasing crypto through these apps is an option, but be aware of the risks. Juno, Venmo, Cash App, Current, Robinhood, and SoFi all allow you to purchase crypto on the app. So what are my favorites and what do I carry? Of these, Juno and Discover are my favorites. With them, you'll get a huge variety of features. Juno can get you 5% cash back from prominent companies, making it a super practical debit card to carry, even though it doesn't provide cash back on all purchases. Plus, it's got that incredibly high 5% bonus on your balance. Juno's limited cash back really is complemented by Discover's 1% cash back on all purchases. And since it's got so many tools within its account, it makes it very versatile for regular usage with a reputable company to back it. These are the cards that I'm I'm carrying in my code 118 wallet right now. All that to say, if you want to see more finance content, then subscribe here. If you want to watch my whole what's in my wallet video, which I put out recently, then you can watch this next. Otherwise, watch this next.